Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Beacon Light Missionary Baptist Church's virtual broadcast for Sunday, July 12th. It is such a blessing to be among you once again and to share with you, and we look forward to a, a wonderful service. As we prepare for service, we ask that if you have any prayer requests, to please submit them into the chat session, and uh, we will see those, and we will be praying for those later on during our prayer section of the service. We're going to begin with prayer by Deacon Merrill Jordan. Uh, Deacon Jordan, if you can unmute your microphone, unmute your phone and, and, and go ahead and pray right now. Deacon Jordan. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello. Hello. Right. Good morning, church. Good morning. Us... Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this beautiful day. Lord, just thank you for allowing us another opportunity to come and worship virtually this morning. Lord, we just give you thanks and praise right now. Lord, just bless this, this service today in a mighty way. Just continue to bless each one of us individually and collectively. Lord, just continue to keep your love and arms around us and continue to strengthen us. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your provision, your protection. Lord, we just say thank you. And Lord, just continue to do what you do each and every day. Give the people that are suffering from, from COVID-19 Give us the strength that we need and show us the way and just show the front line people who are on the front lines what to do and how to do it. Lord, just continue to bless us in a mighty way and just bless this service. These and so many other blessings we ask today in your precious name. Amen. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. Said I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. Yes, I'm a soldier. Yes, I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. Well, I'm a soldier. Got my war clothes on. I got my war clothes on. I got my war clothes on. I got my war clothes on. Do you have your war clothes on? I got my war clothes on. That I got my war clothes on. I got my war clothes on. I'm a soldier. Said I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. If I die, let me die. 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 God is a good God. I said my God is a good God. I said my God is a good God. You know my God is a good God. My God is a holy God. Oh, my God is a holy God. Oh, my God is a holy God. Oh, my God is a holy God. 
There's a storm out on the ocean And it's moving this way If your soul's not anchored in Jesus You will surely drift away Oh, there's a storm out on the ocean And it's moving this way But if your soul's not anchored in Jesus You will surely drift away Oh, drift away, oh, drift away Drift away, you will surely drift away Cause if your soul's not anchored in Jesus You will surely drift away I'm gonna live so God can use me Anywhere, Lord, anytime I'm gonna live so God can use me Anywhere, Lord, anytime Praise the Lord, everybody 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 Praise the Lord Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Sister Morris. And we'll now have our announcements by Sister Sharon Woods, followed by words of encouragement by Minister Jackie Tatum. Amen. Good morning. These are our announcements. All are invited to join us Wednesday in Bible study as we examine the boy Jesus from the book of Ecclesiastes and Luke. By the end of this lesson, we will explore the account of Jesus' experience in the temple at the age of 12. Since the awe experienced by all of those who witnessed Jesus' wisdom, as well as Mary and Joseph's angst and rejoice in the opportunity to know the wisdom of God. In preparation, read and med meditate on Ecclesiastes 3 and Luke chapter 2. Please join us at noon, Monday through Saturday, as we stop, drop, and pray. Tabitha's daughters will resume regular monthly meetings on Saturday, July the 18th at 10 a.m. Please plan to join. Tides and offering can be given by Givelify, mailing to Beacon Light, or by drive through giving. drive through giving at Beacon Light will be on Saturdays from 10 a.m. until noon. Newsletter sign up. We are sharing communications by newsletter. If you would wish to receive this newsletter by email, please sign up on our website. Please send announcements to Sister Maria Saunders by Thursday. Her email address is admin at beaconlightchurch.org. If you'd like to view the service again, you can find it at our website on www.beaconlightchurch.org. Good morning, church. Our words of encouragement are inspired by Psalm 18, Philippians 4 and 7, John 14 and 27. Peace over stress. 
The fight or flight response, also known as the acute stress syndrome, is triggered by the release of hormones that prepare your body to either stay and deal with the threat or run away to safety. In this season of pandemic upticks, systemic racism, and social discord, our bodies may experience this same response. Having to make the decision to stay or deal with a threat or run away to safety disturbs our peace. Our response, the decision, must rest with the peace that is promised by Jesus. We must tap into that peace in order for it to manifest in our response to stress-provoking situations. Pray for guidance. Make a daily declaration before the Lord to settle your spirit. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. It is time for prayer. Let us... Uh, I think another one just came in. I'm sorry. Okay. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come one more time just to tell you thank you. Thank you for all your many blessings. Thank you for this day, a new and magnificent day with which you have blessed us. Thank you so much. I thank you for what it holds, Heavenly Father. I thank you for your grace, your mercy. I thank you for your peace, your protection, and your love. I thank you, Heavenly Father, just for this opportunity now to come to you. Father God, we thank you for the prayers that you have already answered. Thank you for the prayers that you're answering right now. We thank you for all that you're doing in the lives of your people, precious Lord. We thank you for how you're providing comfort and strength. We thank you for how you're reminding us that there is always hope in you. We thank you for how you're reminding us that you never leave or forsake us, Father God. We thank you for how you encourage us through your words, Father God, so that we can keep going regardless of what's happening. Father God, even now we have those in our family, in our church family, who have been impacted by COVID-19 in different ways, Father God. I just lift them up to you right now. The family right now that is in quarantine as they recover, Father God. I pray for their strength, Holy Father, and their comfort and their peace. Lord, I just thank you for a positive outcome, Heavenly Father. I lift up the family now that lost a first cousin this past week, Heavenly Father. Touch that family, strengthen them, oh God. Remind them that you are there with them every step of the way, Holy Father. I pray for Sister D right now. I ask, Father God, that you will be with her. As she goes, for a brain scan on Wednesday, Heavenly Father. She's your child and you are in control of her life, every aspect of her life. And so in faith and with confidence, we put her in your care. And we ask Father God for a good outcome in the name of Jesus the Christ. Lord, I pray for the family right now who has a brother and a sister who are recovering, Father God. I ask you to touch them, Father God. Touch the family, touch the individuals right now who are impacted, Father God, by an illness. Touch their bodies, their physical bodies. And, and I ask you to strengthen them, Holy Father, that as they go through they will be reminded that they're not going through alone. Hallelujah. But you are there and that you're always there, precious Lord. 
and that you are still the great healer, Heavenly Father. Lord, I lift up the McKinley family right now in the name of Jesus. Comfort them, I pray, Heavenly Father, and continue to walk with them, precious Lord. Lord, I lift up mahogany right now. Lord, I, you know the need, Heavenly Father, because you are all knowing. I leave her in your care. I leave her, oh God, in your mighty strong arms right now, Father God. Just bring her out on the other side, victorious Father God, in the name of Jesus the Christ. And I pray for her, her family too, Heavenly Father. Lord, I want to pray for one of our sisters, oh God, who is celebrating a special birthday tomorrow. She did not put it in the request. But I want to just pray for Sister Violet right now. I thank you for that milestone that's coming up tomorrow. I thank you, oh God, for giving her another special year, Heavenly Father. Bless her, and I ask you to give her many more years, Father God, as she celebrates this wonderful milestone. Father God, I just lift up our entire church right now. I ask, oh God, that you will just pour out blessings upon blessings, Heavenly Father, and pull us closer to you, even as we may feel so disconnected and separated right now. I ask you to pull us closer to you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, that because you've started a good work in us, you will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. So I thank you for that. I thank you and I praise you, Lord. I give you all the glory and I give you all the honor. Lord, I just magnify you, Heavenly Father. And Lord, now I pray for our pastor as he comes to bring the word you've given to him. Anoint him, Heavenly Father. Lord, so that he will bring the word as you've given it to him. And I ask in the name of Jesus the Christ that you will open our hearts to receive that word, Father God with obedience, and I ask that we will not only hear this word this morning, but that we will go out and we will do it, Father God. We will act on it, Father God. Hallelujah. Lord, I just thank you. I praise you. Give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, I bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Here I am to walk 
together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. Here I am to worship here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you, you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful, wonderful to me. Here I am to worship. Here I am to worship. God bless you, Sister Morrison, for that excellent selection. As it's time for the word. Today we're coming from Psalm 143, the 143rd Psalm. And this is a Psalm of David, a Song of David where he is appealing for guidance and deliverance. My brothers and sisters, how often do we appeal for guidance? How often do we appeal for deliverance? Well, let's look at David and see how David handled his situation in this message today. The topic for today is, who do you call on in times of need? Who do you call on in time of need? Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you once again, Lord, for just your power, your power in your word, Father. And just thank you, Lord, for being with us, Lord, as we are buffeted on each side, Lord, by the winds of change, Father. But you are the constant in our life, and we thank you for that. So, Father, I pray that as I attempt to preach this message, to share this message, that you be with me, Lord, and allow me to share it the way you would have me with your people, Lord. Open our hearts and ears to hear what thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Who do you call on in times of need? David, we know King David as a successful, very successful king for Israel. But we do know that he had situations in his life where he had to call upon the Lord. In his youthfulness, he fully depended on the Lord for everything he did. But as he got older, he had times where through jealousy of other people, he had to run away. And, you know, King Saul was trying to kill him because of his popularity with the people. He had to hide away from King Saul. And then there was another time when his very own son, Absalom, tried to overrule, take over the kingdom from him. So we do know that he had challenging times. We do know that he even compromised his integrity, his, more, his morality with Bathsheba. So we do know that he had challenging times in our life, and each of us have challenging times in our lives. The question is, what do we do? And where do we go during times of need? Allow me to illustrate with this passage today what David did and what we can do ourselves. I'll give you the outline right now in case I forget to give it to you as we go along. Verses 1 through 2, they deal with David's petition to the Lord. David's petition to the Lord. Verses 3 through 6 deal with David's predicament. What was his current situation? It deals with that. 
And the rest of the chapter seven through 12 deals with David's plea for guidance and deliverance. David's plea for guidance and deliverance. As we look at that very first verse of Psalm 143, David starts out his petition to the Lord, hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In your faithfulness, answer me, and in your righteousness. He is pleading with the Lord. He is begging to the Lord, give ear to my supplication, which is an earnest petition to the Lord. It is crying out to the Lord, Lord, I need you right now. I need you to hear me, Father. I need you to help me, Lord. I, I've got a problem that I can't solve anymore, and I need you, Lord, because he knew through his experiences in life, as the latter part of that verse says, in your faithfulness, answer me. He knew that God was too faithful to forget the covenant relationship he had with him. But it also says, in your faithfulness, answer me, and in your righteousness. He knew that God was too righteous to allow any enemy to come against him and be successful. Have you ever had somebody come at you? Have you ever had somebody who, who wanted to challenge you, who wanted to just take away your faith, take away your existence, take away everything you work for? Well, that's where David was at this time. And even though he was the most powerful ruler at the time, he still had challenges like we have today. So therefore, when we have those challenges, what do we do? Where do we go? Go to the Lord. Again, in that verse one, hear my prayer, O Lord. Lord, I'm coming to you, Lord, because you have been with me all of my life, Lord. I'm coming to you. But you know something else? David also knew that he was flawed. He knew that he was not perfect. None of us are perfect. Verse two, do not enter into judgment with your servant, for in your sight no one living is righteous. David is admitting that he is not a perfect person. He's tried the very best he could, but he knows that he has failed times at during times in his life. So what he's saying is, don't judge me, for I know that I have sinned against you. I'm not worthy of your grace, but Lord, you still love me. Ecclesiastes 7.20, which was written by David's son Solomon says, for there is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. Think about it. There is not a, a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. What he's saying is, no matter how good we think we are, no matter how propped up people prop us up, we are still sinners saved by grace. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, which comes from Romans. Think about it. Psalm 32. This is another psalm of forgiveness. And the 32nd psalm, verses 1 and 2, let me read those. It said, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. And you know what he's probably talking about, the forgiveness he received after his, his, his sinfulness with Bathsheba? You know, he, he really uh, earnestly repented of his sinfulness. And it's interesting coming from this great king that he is pleading with the Lord to hear his prayer, but he's also laying himself bare before the Lord, letting the Lord know that, Lord, I know I'm not all that. Lord, I, I, I know that without you, I am nothing. Lord, I, I know that in the physical, I have failed time and time again, but yet you still love me, yet you still care for me, yet you still deliver me. So therefore, I come once again, Lord, to you acknowledging my faults, but recognizing your grace and recognizing your mercy. 
I think we all have been there a time or two in our lives where we've acknowledged that our behavior was not consistent with what it should be, where, where we have compromised on our morality, where we have compromised on what we knew what was good, but yet God still loves us. So my brothers and sisters, no matter what is going on in our lives right now, remember that God is still there for us. And he's waiting to hear our cry, to hear our prayer. So he's crying out to the Lord, hear me, Lord. And now he's going to share his predicament. What is his situation? Look at verse 3. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness like those who have long been dead. He is saying to the Lord, I have no safety. I have no safety. The enemy are persecuting me. That is certainly something that King Saul did to David. He turned on David. Once David became more popular than King Saul, well, David was his servant, King Saul's servant. We also know his very own son turned on him at time. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. Can you imagine the time when somebody really dear and near to you turned on you? When somebody you really respected turned on you? Have you ever been crushed, hurt so much because you did not see it coming? What do you do during times like that? Do you retaliate or do you cry out to the Lord? The rest of that verse three says, he has made me dwell in darkness. David had to hide in caves from King Saul. He's hiding, he's out of sight like those who have long been dead. Think about it, no matter how great he was, this could either be physical of when he actually did have to hide in caves, or it could be how he feels spiritually. I feel like I'm slipping into darkness. To borrow a phrase, a line from a popular song from back in the day. I feel like those who have long been dead, I feel like those who have died already. I feel like I've already written my obituary and all that needs to be done is the date be put on it. Have we ever felt like that? Have we ever been crushed by someone we cared for, by someone we believed in? Have we ever had to wonder about our very lives, whether it's through sickness and disease, whether it's through persecution, whether it's through work relationships, family relationships, have you ever felt betrayed? So much so that it made you go into that dark place. That's where David is. And look at verse four. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. And when I read that, I, I think about the phenomenon we have on our coast where every year you read about somebody who got caught in a riptide. You think about someone who went out swimming, took their family out for a peaceful day at the beach. And the next thing you know, they were swimming in water and they thought they had everything covered, but suddenly they were overwhelmed by forces that they did not foresee coming. They fight against it, but it continues to take it them where it wants to. And that's how the tide is. That's how those riptides are. Where you are is not where you will end up because you cannot fight when you are overwhelmed. 
And I understand the best thing to do is just to calm down when you're in that situation and allow the water to take you to where it wants you to be. And then the riptide will subside and you can swim out. But by nature, we fight against the water. We panic during times like that. And we become overwhelmed and we lose everything. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. That's how David's feeling. He feels like he's caught up in the riptides of life not knowing whether to fight it or just to ride with the wave. But at times like this, when we feel overwhelmed, let's look what he did in verse five. He said, I remember the days of old. Lord, I remember the good old days. I remember the days of old. I, I meditate on all of your works. I muse on the work of your hands. What he's doing is he is remembering when we get to that dark place, when we feel like we are overwhelmed, let us remember that the Lord is still there. Sometimes we have to put ourselves in a state that instead of dwelling on our current situation, we got to think about what God has already done for us. Amen. It is nature to dwell on what is going on now, but what has the Lord done for you? I got to believe that David went back over his life and he remembered his days as a shepherd, keeping his father's sheep. He remembered the time that the lion came out and tried to snatch the sheep, or a bear came out and tried to snatch the sheep, but the Lord gave him the ability to fight off the enemy at that time. I got to believe that he remembered his time serving in Saul's court when he was a servant of Saul, playing the music for Saul, being an advisor for Saul. I got to think he's remembering the time he went up before the giant Goliath. Here he is, this shepherd boy with a slingshot and a few small stones going up against the mightiest man in the Philistine army and how the Lord allowed him to defeat him. I got to think about, I guess he's thinking about the times where he was leading Saul's armies to victories to victory, and the people were praising him for his intellect in strategic maneuvers. He's remembering the days of old when God was there for him. I encourage us, brothers and sisters, that when it, we feel like we're overwhelmed, we feel like there's no other alternative, let us remember the days of old. Let us remember those times God has delivered us. God has been there for us. Remember those times when we got on our knees and prayed for God to change the situation, for God to protect our children, protect ourselves, to protect us, Lord. Remember what God has done for us. And look what he does also in verse 5. I meditate on all your works. I meditate. I just think about all that you have done, Lord. We can look throughout the Bible and see all the mighty works of the Lord. We can see the work of the Lord as the children of Israel escaped from Egypt through the parting of the Red Sea. We can read about the Jordan River drying up so they could walk into the promised land. We can read about the three Hebrew boys facing the fiery furnace. We can read about Jesus calming the storms while he and the disciples were on in the boat. We can read about Lazarus being raised from the dead, but we don't have only those works to meditate on. We can remember and meditate on his works in our lives. Every now and then, if, you, if, you, if you're like me, you might think about certain situations in your lives where if things had gone differently, we would not be here today. 
We can think about times in our lives where we had already written the script that ended in a bad way, but God sought otherwise. We can think about times in our lives where God has really delivered. And then he says, I muse over the work of your hands. Lord, I, 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 I see the works of your hands, I muse. And that word muse is interesting because it means to talk to oneself. You know, sometimes we have to prop ourselves up. We have to talk to ourselves. Some people think that talking to yourselves is the full first sign of insanity. But you know what? Sometimes talking to ourselves might be the first sign of sanity. Let's look at the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, verse 17. We know the prodigal son asked his father to give me my inheritance right now so I can have a good time. He went to the big city and partied hardy and, and spent everything that he had. And, and next thing he knew, he was destitute. His friends were gone. But in the 17th verse of Luke chapter 15, it says, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father's and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Therefore, make me one of your servants. You know, when times get tough, we need to talk to ourselves. We need to come to ourselves. It is okay to have our personal pity party for a moment. But then we need to snap out of it and realize that the same God who took us through those tough times, the same God who delivered us when we were hungry, the same God who delivered us when there was more month than money in our bank account, that is the same God with us right now. When times get tough, we need to meditate on God and what he can do instead of looking at our own situation and what we can't do. For God can do what we can't do. In verse six, let's look at verse six of Psalm 143. I spread out my hands to you. My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. I spread, he's worshiping, worshiping. Have you worshiped in the midst of your storm? So we think of worship as celebration during the good times. It is easy to celebrate during the good times. But do we worship during the bad times? My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. A thirsty land, think about it. You know these droughts that we're prone to have in the summertime? You remember years gone by when uh, we watched the news and it tells us how much water we have left when we are in drought conditions and we have to conserve things? And the only solution is for the rains to come. The only relief is for the rains to fill our reservoirs once again, to fill our lakes, our water sources once again. And if you look at the plant life, they can go a little while without water. But then they start to shrivel up because they can't find their nourishment. My brothers and sisters, don't be like that. You might shrivel for a little while, but realize that your nourishment comes from the Lord. Spread your hands and worship. Even at the times when it looks like things are dismal. Stretching out your arms, your hands to the Lord. One of the first things a baby realizes or learns how to do is to stretch out their arms to whoever's taking care of them, to their mother, their father, their teacher. When they're in trouble, they come with their arms raised up because they know that in the arms of an adult, they can find comfort. In the arms of an adult, they will be protected. In the arms of an adult, they will find relief. 
So when we spread our arms out to the Lord, what are we doing? We are, we are calling on our heavenly father. We are worshiping him, Lord, because we know that he is our place of comfort. He is our place of relief. He is our Lord. Amen. And then we look at verse 7, which the next topic is David's plea for guidance and deliverance. And in verse 7, he says, answer me speedily, O Lord. Lord, I need, I need answers. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, lest I be like those who go down into the pit. I know the feeling that we have when it seems like the Lord is not listening to us. It's not answering us in a timely manner. You know, it's interesting. We know people in our lives. When we text somebody or we leave a message for somebody, we know who's going to call us right away, who's going to text us right back. Then others might wait hours or even days before they answer us. We condition ourselves with certain people to realize that we're not going to get a reply right away. But with the Lord, we, we want a reply. Lord, help us, Lord. I'm in trouble, Lord. I, I'm in a dark place. I'm overwhelmed, Lord. I don't know what to do. Do not hide your face from me. And when I read this, do not hide your face from me. I think about the Lord's benediction to Moses in Numbers chapter 6, starting at the 22nd verse where he says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Think about it. We want the Lord's face to shine on us. It seems like to David that the Lord's face is no longer before him, that the Lord's answer is not coming to him in a timely manner. Help me, Lord, lest I be like those who go down into the pit, lest I be like those who are consumed and die in the midst of what they are going through. Verse eight, calls me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you I do trust. Calls me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me, Lord, from my enemies. In you I take shelter. Look at what he's asking for. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. When I, when I open my eyes in the morning, Lord, I, I, I want to have thoughts of you, Lord. I, I, I want to have meditation of you. You know how sometimes we, we, we wake up in the morning with the, the window open and we hear the birds outside chirping and everything. And we, it seems like everything's going to be all right in the world. But, you know, spiritually, we need to hear that chirping also. We need to hear the Lord in the morning as we do all day long. For as he says, I trust you, Lord. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk. Direct me, Lord. Guide my steps in you, Lord. For I lift my soul to you. Deliver me, Lord, from my enemies. In you, I take shelter. Where do we go during times of trouble for shelter? My grandfather was a farmer. Now we remember that when we got too close to the chickens, like the mother chicken, or I guess they're hens, but would, would raise her arms. And, and the baby chicks, I guess that's what you call them. I'm not a farmer. But the chicks would run under the wings of the mama for that is where they would find shelter. It's the same way with us in our spiritual life. This is where we will find shelter in the Lord. Verse 10, David says, teach me to do your will. 
for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of the upright. He's saying, teach me, Lord, lead me. And what's so interesting is, here, here's the interesting thing. As long as David has had a relationship with God, as long as God has blessed David, David still realizes that he still has a lot to learn. He still realizes that although he is king and has all the resources of the land, he still needs to have a relationship with the Lord. He realized that his success is not founded just in his good looks. It's not founded just in his strategic mindset or his managerial mindset, but it's in the Lord's spirit. So lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. What's the song? Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, O oh Lord. Lead me. Isn't that what we sing? Don't you think this is what David was asking for at this time? And let's look at verse 11. Revive me, O oh Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And when I think about revive, I often think about CPR. I think about somebody who's, who's passed out or somebody who's not breathing right. And I, I, I think about the actions that we can be trained to take when somebody is, is under distress. I, I think about what the EMTs have to go through when, when they assess your situation, when they, when they reach your home and, and they quickly check on you and check your, your pulse and your, your, all your other vitals. And then they, they, they prescribe what they have to do to revive you. Uh, guess what? My brothers and sisters, there's already a prescription written for us in heaven. God knows what we need. That's why David is crying out to him. David is crying out to God because he knows God knows what he needs at that time. He knows what he needs to be revived. Psalm 106.1 says, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Sometimes we don't want to cry out to the Lord because we think that we have called on his mercy way too many times. But that is just the time that you do need to cry out to the Lord. When we are hurting spiritually, when we are overwhelmed, after all, we don't make ourselves well. We don't wait till we're well to go to the hospital or see our doctor. It's in the midst of our pain. When the pain gets worse, it's when we pick up the phone or get online and make that appointment with the doctor. As our pain gets worse, remember that we have the Lord with us, that we can go through. Whether it's the stress brought on by the symptoms, the physical symptoms of a virus, or whether it's the after effects of the virus, the restrictions in movement, the, the pains we have to take to, before we can move anywhere. Praying for our family who are also affected by this great disease. Whatever's going on in our life, my brothers and sisters, remember that we have the Lord to go to. And in verse 12, in your mercy, in your mercy, Lord, not because I deserve it, in your mercy, Lord, but because I know you're gracious, I know that I'm your child, cut off my enemies and destroy all those who afflict my soul, for I am your servant. Here's one of the most prominent men in the world who is saying that I am your servant. How do we see ourselves during times of trouble and tribulation? Do we see ourselves as men often want to do, I can tough it out. 
I'm a man. I don't need help. But do we see ourselves that God sees us? Do we call out to him? Do we petition to the Lord? Do we share with him what is going on? Do we acknowledge to him that we're not perfect? Again, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin are death. But guess what? The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Do we recognize that our God is there for us? And even though he might not answer us when we want the answer, all we have to do is look back over our life and realize that he's been there all the time. He's protected us all the time. And he will continue to protect us all the time. I'm not saying that we won't get battered and bruised every now and then, but God is there. Even in the midst of that, just like the parent is there for the young child to cuddle them and kiss the boo-boos that happen in life. We serve a God who is there with us to cuddle us and care for us. and give us peace in the midst of the storms that we are going through. Just a message from David of how he felt. But as we look at David's position, we have to ask ourselves, how many leaders are willing to bow down and acknowledge that they are nothing without the Lord? I pray that this message has brought you is bringing you a sense of peace and a reason to rejoice in the midst of what's going on. Who do you go to during times of need? Let us pray. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the power in your word, and I thank you for all who are hearing this and will hear this in further broadcasts. I pray that you touch us, Lord, and let us know that you are still there, still protecting us, and still caring for us. Now, Father, if there is one who does not know Christ at this time, I pray, Lord, that you will look into their hearts. And I ask each one of us to examine ourselves and our spiritual condition with you, Lord. Lord, as we open the doors of the church, if there's one who does not know you, Lord, Scripture tells us that all we have to do is to believe in him, confess him with our mouth, and believe in our heart that God raised you, Lord, from the dead. And Scripture tells us in Romans 10, 9, that if we do that, if we confess and we believe, that we will be saved. So therefore, if there is one who would like to accept Christ right now, you know who they are. You bless them, Lord. You hear their plea and consider it done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. It has been such a joy to once again share with you on this service. And once again, we're going to end with our song, We Are the Church. So God bless you, and may he watch over you as the week goes on, as the week goes on. Amen.
Preacher does.